It's Friday and we want to welcome you back to our Canada Week of Celebrations as we celebrate Canada's 150th anniversary in partnership with Crossroads and This Far by Faith to bring you stories of Canadians who've made a significant impact in our nation and all around the world. Today we are featuring two great Canadian women who are making a difference in this world. The first is a six-time Olympic medalist and the only Canadian Olympian to win five medals in a single Olympic Games. And the second is a gynecologist who founded a nonprofit organization and it focuses on the prevention of maternal mortality. Both driven, committed, and dedicated, the kind of women that we love, and both have a deep faith that motivates them in all that they do. We are so proud of them, our Canadian women. Take a look. Cindy Clausen, winner of six Olympic medals, is Canada's most decorated Olympian. Known for her dominance in the sport of speed skating, Cindy holds numerous world and Canadian records. I actually believed that I was going to be a hockey player, so I never in my wildest dreams thought I'd end up being a speed skater and competing internationally that way. As a teenager, Cindy already demonstrated the ability to compete at a world-class level. When I was about 18 years old, I got a chance to come out to Calgary and try out for the women's national team. And I really thought, this is it, this is my chance, and I'll be going to the Olympics in 1998. I found out that I hadn't made the team, and I was devastated because I really thought that was God's plan for my life. Turned down for Canada's national women's hockey team, Cindy looked for another sport to challenge her while at university. My parents suggested speed skating, and the funny thing is, is that was the last thing I ever wanted to do because I thought there was no way I'd put on one of those tight skin suits and the long blades just looked funny to me. So I went out to the club and got on the ice and I was in for a shock because I could barely stand up on the skates and little five-year-old kids were flying past me on the ice. So it was a very humbling experience. But for some reason, I kept going, and I went to another practice and another, and um, I improved quite quickly, and soon speed skating became my sport. <laughs> so I thought to myself, I'll give up hockey for one year and see how it goes. Not only did I make it to the Canada Games, but I also made the junior national team in speed skating, and I ended up winning a couple of medals there. So that kind of um, settled it for me, and I decided I'd move out to Calgary and pursue skating. The neat thing about speed skating is that even though you're racing against other athletes, you're really racing against the time and trying to get a faster time than you've done before and just trying to put together a perfect race. By 2002, Cindy Clausen was a fixture on Canada's national speed skating team, competing in her first Olympics at Salt Lake City. I was extremely nervous. I was going into my very first race, which was the 3,000 meter, and I remember not being able to eat or sleep a couple days prior to the race. Early on the day of the race, she received an email from the staff and students of her former high school in Winnipeg. They said they were praying for me, and all I needed to do was go out and do the best that I could. When I got this email, I just felt a sense of peace. At 22 years of age, Cindy Clausen won her first Olympic medal, a bronze in the 3,000 meter. Her international success continued when she became the first Canadian in 27 years to win the overall title in the 2003 World All-Round Speed Skating Championships. It just seemed like God really just gave me wings to fly. It seemed like when I, I stepped onto the ice and could only come from him because I, I had only been speed skating for a few years before that. By 2005, Cindy was back on top of the podium winning gold in both the 1500 meter and 3000 meter world championships. Going into the 2006 Olympics, it was very exciting because I knew based off of pre previous results that season that I could be a contender in most of the races I was going into. Going into the 1500 meter race, I was going to be paired with Annie Friesinger and she was 
a dominant force in the 1500 meter and normally I think I'd be kind of nervous about that just because she's so strong and such a fierce competitor. It ended up being a, a perfect race. It just, I, it just felt kind of flawless. And to stand on the podium, to see the Canadian flag being raised and um, to sing your national anthem is such an honor. Not only did Cindy win a gold medal, she won another four medals at the 2006 Turin Olympics. I won bronze in the 3000 meter, silver in the team pursuit and the 1000 meter, bronze in the 5000 meter, and gold in the 1500 meter. The thing that I really like about this medal, it may sound strange, but um, I don't know if you can see, but it's starting to tarnish a bit. It's such a great reminder for me that these medals, um, I'm grateful for them and it's an honor to be able to win them, but they're all going to rest and pass away. And so, and all that matters is my relationship with Christ and living my life for Him. In 2006, Cindy was awarded Canada's highest athletic accolade, the Lou Marsh Award for Athlete of the Year. I believe that the Speed skating is a gift I've been given from God and the ability to be able to um, perform at a high level. It's all from God. In 2008, while competing in Berlin, Cindy got devastating news from home. I got a phone call one night from my brother telling me that my sister Lisa had been in an accident. And he said that it didn't look good. Um, and the chances were that she wouldn't survive and that by the time I got home, she probably would not be alive. Lisa's car had tumbled off a bridge and she was submerged underwater for more than five minutes. I remember just giving it to God and I was able to just release her into his hands and I said to God, like, your will be done in her life. And I just felt this sudden peace come over me. Kicked out the window, cut the seatbelt, and got the person out and started yeah. CPR. I was in the hospital for two weeks, and then after that, I came home and I was recovering for quite a while after that. It's really a miracle that she's alive and, and doing well today. Cindy decided to stay in Winnipeg to help Lisa with the rehabilitation process. It was a good time for Cindy to also address her own physical problems. My knees had not been doing well that season. I was having a lot of issues. They were pretty painful um, in skating and in training. So I had bilateral knee surgery on both of my knees. They said that they were a lot worse than expected and it would probably take about six months or so until I could start skating again. So that whole season was a write-off and that's a big season. The year before the Olympics, people are just kind of feeling things out and you kind of see how good the competitors are and usually the people that perform well at the end of that season do well the following season at the Olympics. Every time Cindy tried to get back on the ice, her knees would flare up. The hope of being ready for the 2010 Vancouver Olympics was fading. I didn't get back to where I wanted to be, but I was grateful that uh, God gave me the, the ability to qualify for those games and to be able to race in front of the home crowd was, it was such an honor. Cindy Clausen, five medals in turn, listen to the cheer. Her family cheering her on. The fatigue is starting to kick in. The crowd was so loud and uh, almost <laughs> tears came to my eyes. It was just emotional. It was pretty amazing. Despite the overwhelming support, Cindy did not win a medal at the Vancouver Games. Sometimes with the knee pain, sometimes I think, oh, is this it? <laughs> I, I don't know how much longer I can go. And I also think, well, if I'm going to one day get married and have kids, am I going to be able to play with my kids <laughs> or are my knees going to be so bad? But um, I really feel like right now, I feel like this is where God wants me to be. And so I just really look to him for strength and guidance. And, uh, and if it's time to change, start something new, then so be it.
Wherever you are across our great nation, when you need prayer, give us a call anytime. We're here for you. Did you have a family doctor looking after you? Yeah, he was. And, uh, I love delivering babies. I love working with moms. Um, and yet, as I traveled around the world, I saw such a discrepancy between the way women are treated in some places versus another. Good. Everything going okay? Uh, here in North America, mothers are cared for, their babies. We do everything that we can uh, to save a mother's life. And yet, when you go to other places around the world, women literally bleed to death and there's no help for them. And to me, as a Christian and one who just loves people, I say to myself, how is that? How can that be in this world that there's such a discrepancy? Dr. Jean Chamberlain Froze is a Hamilton obstetrician, McMaster University associate professor and gynecologist who has made it her life's work to help provide adequate health care for mothers in East Africa. Back in 2002, 2003, where a group of us got together and said, how do we bring about the systemic change that is needed uh, for safe motherhood? We'll just take a moment just to have a look inside. There's a lot of social and cultural issues that keep women from uh, delivering in a safe place. For half of the women do not have a skilled attendant with them. In so other instead of just taking a medical approach and saying, well, let's build more hospitals and uh, train more health workers, uh, together with some colleagues of mine in Uganda, we really brainstormed together to say, how do we get non-medical people involved? How do we get politicians, journalists, social scientists, faith leaders involved in saving the lives of mothers. You know, it's not by chance that we have good health care for mothers here in Canada. All of those people behind the scenes are advocating for safe motherhood because it's what we do. We value women. How does a young woman born in St. Thomas, Ontario, end up changing things for women half a world away in East Africa? By the time I was seven or eight years old, I wanted to be a missionary doctor somewhere in East Africa, but I didn't really realize what my role would be. I thought I would be doing mostly clinical work, standing there saving babies. I think my parents really instilled in me just that uh, heart for people who do not have and that you've been blessed with so much, so what can you do? Uh, not out of guilt, but really just out of joy in your heart. And I think that's been one of the greatest uh, gifts that they've given me. Expect that men to provide the shelter. So the Save the Mothers program is a Masters of Public Health Leadership program that's held at the Uganda Christian University. And every year we're taking 60 students into the program. These students are not regular students. They are professionals working in various spheres of influence. They may be in parliament, they may be in the media, they may be in faith communities, they may work for various uh, non-governmental organizations that are involved in some sort of development in the country. Roughly 200 East African professionals have graduated from the program, each in turn influencing at least a thousand others in their sphere. Everybody got it? Yes. Any questions? Please, very important for you to understand that. Okay? Froza's tireless work has earned her the Prix d'Excellence, a Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Canada award that recognizes doctors who go beyond the call of duty. You know, I heavily believe in the importance of training people on the ground in these developing countries. If we're just going over and giving aid, aid is not enough to help the mothers 10 years from now. We need to be changing systems in these developing countries so that there is safe motherhood available for mothers uh, even 15 years from now. Sit down. Did everybody wa wash your hands? Did everybody wash? Okay. Father in heaven, we do thank you for this food. We ask that you bless it. We thank you for... Somebody took a photo of me back in 1998, and then Tom happened to see it in 1999. And uh, being a journalist and rather bold, he actually ended up calling me uh, through, through a mutual connection. And uh, we, we ended up becoming uh, friends, and uh, that's really how we met. You did a whole lap around it. Right. Now, were you in there because it was raining? Um, yeah. I always joke with people, I was never going to marry a doctor, and it was, marrying a journalist was a great uh, selection in terms of my career, and I think it has been for Tom to also marry a doctor. And I remember asking him, are you willing to go overseas? Because I knew that was where my career was going to be, and he said, nope. So I kind of stroked him off the list, but uh, God gave him a change of heart, and I think um, his career has really blossomed since he's been overseas. Married for 11 years, 
Jean and Tom and their three children spend eight months of the year living in Uganda. Elizabeth is nine years of age, born at St. Joseph's Hospital here in Hamilton. Uh, Jonathan is seven, also born here, and then Hannah is six. Uh, she's our little Ugandan daughter. So living in Uganda for eight months and living in Canada for four months a year is, is an incredibly healthy way for the family to, to go through our days. The children are getting an education beyond what any money could buy. They go to school in Uganda, they go to an international school and they also attend school for a short while while they're here uh, in Canada. I'm so aware, and my husband together, um, of how important it is for us to make a good life for the children as well, too, that they're not just tag-alongs, that they're very much part of the work that we do. And certainly in, in the developing world, as a woman, having children is just so important. That's the first thing a woman will ask you. And so she can relate so much more to you if you say, yes, I have uh, children now. Of course, it, being a mother here uh, in North America is very different than being one in Uganda, but um, it helps me to be able to share some of the struggles that uh, those women have. Each year in Uganda, 7,000 women die of pregnancy-related complications. Save the Mothers is changing that for women like Helen. A cesarean section saved her life and the life of her baby. Now they're both going home. Well, I think the center line for me is understanding who I am, uh, who I am before God, that I'm a person that he has created, that he loves, that he has a purpose for my life. And I think that has really just given me the courage, even in situations that are difficult, to say, you know what, this is what God has called me to do. And it's been fantastic to see uh, the work overseas developing. Sometimes you feel like this, there's this wind behind you pushing you and showing you the right direction because, quite frankly, it's a new area. Safe motherhood, uh, we, we don't know all the solutions yet. Talked about a wise man uses his words carefully. I think the challenge is to reaching the goal of no mother or child should die from pregnancy-related complications is really to bring the swell of people who are engaged in safe motherhood to a critical mass in the developing world so that there's a change in expectation that no mother or child should die. But we look at the developing world and we see a child who loses its mother uh, under the age of five. That child is five times more likely to die of something uh, than a child who has a mother. And that really cemented to me how important it is to have mothers who are alive and who are healthy uh, to look after their children. And that's what's going to make the next generation. Those young children are the, the future generation of any country. And I think having seen the program now for seven years and seeing these East African professionals themselves impacting their own society, that there couldn't be a greater feeling than to seeing the people that you've trained actually going out and doing what you have encouraged them to do. Well, thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed those two stories of Jean Chamberlain Froze and Cindy Clausen. And we hope you have a wonderful Friday. And if you are Canadian, wherever you are in the world, have an amazing July 1st weekend. And together we all said, Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Canada! Oh my and from gosh, all of us here at See Your Love. What did you just say? <laughs> you said the wrong thing. <laughs> Oh, what'd you say? Happy Canada Day. Well, that's right. Sorry. That's the same thing. Happy Canada Day. So happy Canada Day to all of you. We'll see you on Monday. <laughs> You're going to keep that. I'm I know keeping you it. Are. Yeah. I'm keeping oh, it. Sorry. Done. Yeah.